traditionally, uh, the way that the corn was made fermentable was by chewing on it. Ah, um, and okay. primarily women uh, would chew on the corn uh, while, while working in the fields. And Welcome to Stout Conversations, where every week we sit down with creative thinkers in the craft beer industry and beyond. Your hosts, Ken and April, live and work in a 24-foot RV, traveling the country in search of great stories around a great beer. What if we fermented something other than barley? The result? Chicha and pulque, two unique and ancient styles of beverages changing the brewery scene as we know it. This week, we sit down with founder Judd Bellstock of Dos Luces Brewery for an intriguing and very different conversation about beer. Yes. And then um, these paintings over here were commissioned specifically for the space. Uh, and they are from an artist out of Teotihuacan, Mexico. Uh, and she depicts um, the story of Chicha and Pulque. So we're here at uh, Dos Luces with Judd Bellstock. And Judd, uh, Dos Luces is a different kind of name for most breweries around Denver and stuff. So that kind of stands out in and of itself. So maybe you can give us a little bit of a rundown on the name, but then I know there's even a lot more coming when we get down to the beer side of things. So. Sure thing, yeah. So I mean, it's it's dos luces literally means two lights, okay. um, and the two lights kind of represent uh, most literally the sun and the moon, which you kind of see on our logo. We've got a, a sun eclipsed by the uh, partially eclipsed okay. by the moon, um, and uh, so that that's where it kind of starts, and then it extends to the products we make as well. Uh, so chicha and pulque. Uh, our chicha, the, the uh, signpost, I, I don't call them brands, I kind of call them signposts. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the name for our chicha, all of our chichas is Inti, which is the Inca god of the sun. And the name for all of our pulques is Metzli, which is the Aztec god of the moon. So that's something very different in the brewing world. I mean, we, we travel a lot and I've never seen this anywhere in the United States. Is that so to split up your your beverages like that? Is that akin to say ale versus lager in the traditional beer sense? Kind of, mm, kind of dividing them into two different types. A of little bit. Beer? Uh, yeah. So it, it it is in that you kind of think of ale versus lager as ale more complex, much more going on, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the yeast side, um, and. That's where IPAs live, so that's where your hoppiness come, tends to come in. Versus, you think of lagers traditionally as the more simple of the two, the more right, clean, yeah. clean uh, style, very yep. limited ingredients. Yep, and that's exact. That's in, similarly, uh, my chichas tend to be more simple. They're they're basic corn beers made from malted blue corn, cinnamon, and clove. Um, I use cinnamon and clove to varying degrees the way that most breweries would use hops. Okay. Um, and uh, so our chichas definitely have the more easy to like flavor profile versus the pulques, which um, veer toward the sour end a little bit, though I call them backwards sours. Um, because most sours uh, will hit you with the kind of malty sweetness up front and then sour on the finish. This is exactly the opposite, where it's more sour on the front and sweet on the finish, which I think is really pleasant because it, uh, yeah. it doesn't leave you with that kind of lingering sourness. So now when you, when you kind of say some sourness to it, would you, this is not anything near like the sour trend that we're talking about traditionally, right, that's going on in the craft beer world, right, where it's a lot of Brett beers and kettle sours and... Um, not quite. This is this is more of a natural process. Um, so uh, pulques would be um, traditionally made by taking maguey sap. Uh, so the maguey plant is a cousin of the agave plant. Um, okay. It's what uh, mezcal is made out of. So right. like mezcal versus tequila. Um, and the these these plants, these uh, cactus basically, uh, mature over a period of fifteen to twenty years. Uh, so they become really huge. Um, and then you tap them, similar to a maple tree. Or a really? But, so uh, you're going up to a cactus? Uh, yeah, kind of. It's, it's, <laughs> it's more towards the bottom, and you're, you're there, it's a much more aggressive digging process. <laughs> uh, and then the sap, the aguamiel, uh, accumulates overnight in the, in the kind of well of the, of the plant. And then you come and get it in the morning, let it spontaneously ferment. 
Um, okay. And then that's that's pulque. Um, my pulque is a little bit different because it's a pulque beer. So it's 50% malted blue, 50% of the fermentables come from malted blue corn and 50% come from maguey sap. Uh, and we don't let it spontaneously ferment because I don't have the same air profile as the jungles of Mexico. Um, <laughs> So we ferment it in uh, in the stainless steel uh, vessels. Okay, nice um, Rocky Mountain air, but here yeah, in Denver, we do. But, <laughs> we do. Um, but it is, yeah. It would be very different when, yeah. if, for anybody who's familiar with. I guess you would say almost like a wild fermentation, a spontaneous yeah. fermentation, which is also becoming kind of a a, a little bit more common thing these days. Although yeah. it's still pretty niche. Uh, yeah, and, and we do. So it's not a straight, a spontaneous fermentation, but we do a kettle souring step okay. uh, where after the first couple batches we found we accidentally left the lid of the tank open and okay. found that the flavors were so much better when we did that. Really? So, uh, so you do have something in so, here in yeah. the brewery <laughs> that's like doing its magic. Yeah, so, uh, so in cool. addition to the natural bacteria that, that are in the magaea sap, uh, we're letting some some natural Denver Denver nice. uh, elements come That's into it. That's kind of a happy accident, then, right? It gives yeah. you another little interesting twist to the story. But, yeah, exactly. You know, so. Can you tell tell us a little bit about where these come from? I mean, absolutely. So chicha comes from uh, most closely associated with the Aztec in Peru, and that's where there's there's really about 50 different varieties of chicha really? in, okay. in th throughout Latin America, and that's not including the other corn beers uh, like Tesquino, which is very similar uh, from Tesquino is from Mexico, and it's very similar to chicha in how it's made, uh, but uh, not called chicha. So uh, would this be very common if you if you went to that part of the world and like? Depending on which part where where you are, uh, it'll mean something different. Uh, okay. So. Um, the, what we draw most closely from is Peruvian chicha, okay. um, which uh, is uh, there's there's also Bolivian chicha, which would have more of a sour profile. Um, if you went to Chile and mm -hmm. asked for chicha, you it's kind of a generic term for a low alcohol beverage, so, uh, so it could be a, uh, a fruit wine. <laughs> here in the U.S., <laughs> it's like unheard of. Yeah. Like I I and honestly, before before we found out about you and, and Dos Luces. Hadn't, it hadn't even been on my radar. I hadn't even heard of it, never seen it anywhere. So it's obviously a very rare find in the United States. But in, in that part of the world, even though it might have some different strains, different variants, yep. you would find it a little more commonly, like mm. in Peru. Or <laughs> more, more commonly than in the U.S., for sure. But for sure. it still is uh, is kind of re-emerging. Um, okay. it, uh, the, after the So 500 years ago after the Spanish conquest, they really made an active at the Spanish uh, and then the the uh, German and Austrian immigrants that came in as well uh, w uh, made an active effort to suppress these beverages. Um, marketing campaigns saying that they're they're dirty. Uh, they're, they're with pulque specifically. There was a, a, a tagline called <laughs> that said uh, pulque is poop. Oh, um, they, they, they spread the false rumor that. Uh, that feces were used to uh, to make the uh, fermentation process go faster, uh, which <laughs> absolutely we is not true, and absolutely we would never do here. Yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah. It's not like that rare coffee um, you see in the bucket list. But uh, <laughs> and, and then with chicha, uh, they they the 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 way that they they kind of suppressed it was again health reasons. Uh, because traditionally, uh, the way that the corn was made fermentable was by chewing on it. Ah, um, okay. And primarily women uh, would chew on the corn uh, while, while working in the fields. And there was, there turns out there's a good reason why women were better at it. Um, there's more enzymes in women's saliva than men. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so, they, so that's how it would have been made 500 years ago. Man. Today, um, we use malted corn, and in fact, most of the chicha that you're going to find in Peru uses malted yeah, corn. Yeah, that'd be well. hard to get past the health department, and it probably wouldn't be very cost effective <laughs> these days. Uh, to, I mean, to yeah. have a bunch, hire a bunch of women or, or whoever to come in and chew on the yeah. corn. Well, Dogfish Head does their, uh, they do a chicha every year. Yeah. Um, and they chew a portion of really? the grain bill. <laughs> um, I believe they use 
barley for a portion of the grain bill as well, which okay. uh, is helpful from an enzymatic perspe- <laughs> perspective. Um, but uh, yeah, they have a hundred and some employees at Dogfish, yeah. and even so, they can only chew a certain portion <laughs> of the grains. Uh, with my five people, I don't think we could chew 500 pounds of corn. Uh, be busy. <laughs> certainly not be busy. in a week. Uh, so then, that's chicha. Yep. Now, what about the pulque? So the pulque, I, I started to talk about um, the where that comes from, the maguey right. sap. Uh, so the maguey plant is uh, is related to agave, um, and it's what's what mezcal is made out of. Uh, but as I said, you kind of tap it, some somewhat like a maple tree, right. um, and that uh, that sap then is for, is naturally fermented, uh, and we try to recreate that natural fermentation. Um, by using a, uh, a blend of yeasts that attempt to emulate as best we can what you might find in the jungles of Mexico. Right. Um, yeah, and without going down there and capturing bacteria, yep. <laughs> trying to trying to bring it back well, here. Someday we will, Which, but uh, <laughs> right now. You this heard is, it here first, yes. it's gonna happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, the, the pulque uh, dates back to the Aztec. Um, and some cultures that came before them as well. Um, but uh, both of them traditionally were ceremonial drinks um, reserved for, uh, for priests. Um, in the case of pulque, uh, you got a certain amount before you were, if, if you were being sacrificed to the gods, you would get to drink a certain amount of pulque. It was very, very nice, very, uh, very generous of them. Not a bad way to go, I guess, um, <laughs> if you're going to be sacrificed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Get, get a little taste of pulque. So would you um, say it's somewhat akin to, say, wine in the Christian and Catholic religions? Uh, and yep, yep. Uh, so, there are definitely some similarities there. Okay. Well, that would make sense. I mean, it seems that most religions around the world have very some threads that weave through all of them that are very similar. Absolutely. So, Would you say one, one variety or the other lends itself to more experimentation or more varieties for you, more differences, or... Is, is that just whatever you want to do with it? No, I think they both work really well. Um, depending on depending on what I want to do with it, uh, the the chichas tend to lend themselves more to the um, sweeter, fruity flavors, mm-hmm. um, uh, as well as the spicy. The, like n- not spicy uh, as in um, not heat, but not heat, but like spices. Right. Um, like the nutmeg, the, the yeah. cinnamon, the Clove, yeah, different things. Um, the pulques, citrus, <laughs> is awesome with them, um, but also uh, the the one of my favorites that we've brewed so far was a, a coffee chocolate pulque, uh, and the coffee with the pulque just adds a, a whole dimension of flavor because you're combining sweet, sour, bitter. Uh, all together in one beverage and usually you don't get that because with sour beers you can't hop them very much uh, so there you don't get a lot of bitterness but the coffee we can add an element of bitter to it how did you come to this how did you, like this is this is very obviously we've talked about already very not the norm in the United States <laughs> how, do, how do you come across these two very ancient really styles of of fermented beverages uh, so I've known about chicha for a very long time. Um, my dad was in the Peace Corps in Peru in the late 60s. Oh, okay. uh, so he lived there for a couple of years and um, drank chicha while he was there. Uh, and so he told me about it, especially when I came into the beer industry 17 years ago now. Um, and kind of kept kept buzzing in my ear about uh, huh. telling me about chicha. Um, and then I met my co-founder about 13 years ago, 14 years ago now. Um, and he uh, was a brewer at the time and is now a professor of fermentation science at Cornell. Uh, he knew about chichas and we started talking about alternative fermentations and doing, doing things with different types of grains. And then he introduced me to pulque as well. Um, and uh, we managed to track down, uh, I don't remember exactly where he got it, but uh, a, a canned pulque uh, that, would, that had been imported in the United States. Wow. Uh, it was not very good. Uh, <laughs> we have no way of knowing how old that was. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and further, um, I mean, pulque is, is uh, uh, at, when you get it in Mexico, especially, it's a living thing. Uh, it's usually... Right. Like a the, lot of bottle-conditioned beers yeah, are here. It's, it's uh, best when it's fresh and there's live yeast in there. And then okay. and in order to can it, 
unless you want to explode in cans, <laughs> you pasteurize, right. which uh, changes the flavors. Mm. Um, okay. So the I, I, I'm not surprised it wasn't that good, but uh, <laughs> but uh, when we got the chance to try fresh pulque, and especially when I started brewing with uh, with real maguey sap, um, which was very hard to find, <laughs> uh, then uh, then the, the, the flavors really Not exactly came to life. Exactly on the grocery store shelf. Here, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the future for you guys with the with these two different uh, fermented fermented beverages here? This corn beer, right? I yep. mean, basically. Yep. Um, what do you what do you see the future for this? Do you see a lot of experimentation on coming down the road or always? Um, yeah. So I, I do a weekly brew. Mm-hmm. Um, I do a little two and a half gallon batch of something that's that that I want to try. It sometimes becomes something in the big big vessels. Uh, sometimes it's just. Uh, is just that something fun you serve? Uh, yeah, every week. Every you week. Just we just do kind of a pilot batch that you yep. say, "Hey, you want to try this?" Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's the joy uh, of like that craft brewery is you get to craft your craft you got it and have fun with it yeah there's really yeah. no right or wrong and especially here you're i mean there aren't too many people too many competitors out there that you have to say you're vying with them for space you know so you get to play around and say hey what do you think of this that's, what do you think of that? that's the idea yeah <laughs> well one thing we like to ask everybody that we talk to is you know our our brand is living a stout life and we kind of came upon that one because we love good beer and we do like stouts a lot but (laughs) but we found that we meet a lot of interesting people over a good beer and different kinds of beer but uh, with that also is like a stout life is more than just the beer it's about uh, you know what is something that stands out to you and, and makes life worthwhile and so we like to ask people what to you is a stout life? What would living a stout life be to you? Um, I think it's all about balance. Uh, about uh, uh, to to some extent, and I'm not saying anything. Mm-hmm. I, I would never want to say anything bad about any other brewery, big or small. Um, but I feel like as an industry, we've gone in this direction of more, more, more. Uh, and more hops, more alcohol. Let's make it as extreme as possible. Um, and I think it's important uh, with your beverages and with your life to kind of maintain a balance and to, to make sure that, uh, that all the flavors come together, whether it's 12% alcohol, 5% alcohol, or 2% alcohol, or none. Um, and making sure that everything comes together and, and works and, and uh, nothing, there's, there's no flavor that, uh, that is overwhelming everything else. Uh, and I think in life that's, it's the same way. Uh, you you got to take work, family, travel, uh, and, and balance it all together to make sure that you're, you're kind of living a complete life. It's a brilliant metaphor. Yeah, it is a brilliant <laughs> metaphor, and somehow the whole balance thing doesn't surprise me too much when I stare at the logo yeah. for Dos Luces, yeah. and you take that whole story into account, it obviously fits you for sure, <laughs> and I think it would do well by the rest of us as well. Good. So with that, I think we should all grab a beverage and do cheers. a little cheers. Sounds good. You want that one? Yeah, this one. Go for it. Well, well, that, this I'm is empty, right? Yes. This I'm is going, beautiful. I'm going for the cold chocolate. Cheers. 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 There are new episodes with new conversations every Sunday night. Be sure to subscribe and click the little gray bell so you don't miss out. Interested in what these beers taste like but can't make it to Dos Luces just yet? Check out our special tasting episode where Judd describes the spices and flavors that characterize these unique beers. We'd love to hear from you. What do you think? Would you try this? Or maybe you have already. Let us know by leaving a comment below or by following the link in the description. And this is meant to be pretty formal, so... Pretty what? I'll keep it pretty... Ca- or formal? Informal, sorry. <laughs> pretty formal? No. And I'm setting a good tone by saying it's going to be formal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My tux and everything. But, okay. So the, the brewing area starts back there. Uh, a little bit different kind of setup. Where most breweries would have three vessels, we have two. Uh, so the furthest back is a hot liquor tank. Okay. Um, yeah, a hot water heater. Uh, and then the second one is a highly customized tank. It's a brew, a, uh, a mash tun slash boil kettle. Uh, traditionally, chichas are made by boiling with the grains still in there. 
Uh, oh, so okay. we had a customized vessel made where we could, where, with the grain still in there. Um, the idea is simple, uh, that you <laughs> mash and then turn up the heat to start boiling. Uh, execution is much, much more difficult.